Hello everyone, I am Sadiq Mahfouj. I am teaching assistant uh, for Electrical Circuit 1 lab and today we are going to make a video tutorial uh, about the experiment number 1 uh, that is introduction to Kirchhoff's law and using of multimeters and power generators. So <coughs> first we are going to run through the theory about Kirchhoff's law. Okay, so there are two main theories about Kirchhoff's law. One is Kirchhoff's voltage law and one is and another one is Kirchhoff's current law. So Kirchhoff's voltage law states that algebraic summation of voltage in a closed loop is zero. So in a closed loop, the voltage that is being generated should be dropped between the different components uh, in the loop. So you can see the picture that uh, the resource is the voltage generator here and uh, the voltage dropped in the component R1 and R2, that's the resistors. Uh, the voltage drop between resistors v, uh, R1 and R2 is V1 and v, V2. <coughs> so the net voltage should be zero. So if we write the equation here in this circuit, that is this one, that the voltage generated by the source is being absorbed by the different components. So V1 plus V2 should be V source, is equal to V source. And the second law of Kirchhoff's is uh, Kirchhoff's current law. And it says, it says that algebraic summation of current through a node is zero. So the current that is coming in a node should be equal to the current that is going down from the node. So here is a picture and you can see in this node A current I1 and current I4 is coming in the node and current I2 and current I3 is going down from the node. So as I said, the total current through the node should be zero. So if you write the equation, the equation would be like this, I1 plus I4 is equal to minus I2 plus I3 or in other words I1 plus I4 is equal to I2 plus I3. Okay, so that's the basic Kirchhoff's law. Now here you can see like this is my voltage generator and this is my multimeter and this is my signal generator which we don't need right now. So for the voltage generator you can see there are like three channels over here. There's one, two and three. So it basically means that we can use like three power, three this ports as a power supply. So for this port it can be controlled by this one. See it says one and it says 2, it says 3, so this 3 thing controls this one. So how does it control? For example, suppose we're going to use this one, right? So it says on and off, so first you press this, so this one is now on. So how much voltage do you need? For example, we need 5 volts, alright? So we use V set here, and use 5.0, and then we enter, so it's 5 volt here. Get it? So here's the thing. The same thing you can do for this one and this one also. For example, I'm going to use, for example, uh, number 3, alright? So use, I turn number 3 on, and then V set, and then 5.0, then put enter, see? 5 volt here. So now this one is functional. Here's the thing though, there are three channels, right? So how far can I go? There's a limit to it. We cannot go like, for example, if you ask me like 100 volts, we cannot do it. For this channel, I've already checked, this one rises up to a maximum 25 volts, but for this two, this one and this one, it's 6 volts. And also, like, there's this thing called I set, which we don't need right now because we need constant voltage source, not a constant current source for now. Okay, so this is my multimeter. So what it does is that it measures your voltage, your current, and also your impedance. For example, like we want to measure voltage, right? So what I'm going to do is that, see, it says DCV. So you put DCV, it's already in DCV. So you just put it here. See, this is this black thing, this is my ground, all right? This is my common port. So it should be all the stick in this place. But look at this one. This one says V ohm hertz, uh, diode signal and hertz. So what it basically means that with this port, we, we can measure voltage and also resistance or impedance. 
but we cannot measure current. So if I were to measure current, we have to stick it in inside this port. See, it says 500 milliampere max, this port, or this one. So it says like 220 ampere. So depending on our current, how much current do we, the circuit actually in there flows. So depending on the current, we'll just put in over here or here. That depends. So for now, we're going to measure voltage, right? So this one, let's test it out here. So it says that like the channel one is currently off. So you turn it on. It says five volt right here, right? So let's just check if it is five volt or not. Okay, so I just put one here and then here. See over there, it says five volt already. Let's just try another. Let's just uh, turn on channel two now. So two. Let's just go for yeah six volt already. Let's just set for three point five volt then. So V set. Uh, let's just go for 3.5 there you go 3.5 let's just check it out so you put it stick it inside here and then this see it says 3.5 volt so it's working all right okay so this is our multimeter and this is our power generator now what you're gonna do uh, what i'm gonna do is that i'm going to make you familiar with the breadboard here so if you see the breadboard there's this all this like dots right so what does it actually mean, this dots? So first thing you have to notice is that the perpendicular nodes are the vertical ones. For example, like this, 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 these are all shorted. For example, like if these are all the same nodes, these are all shorted. But like uh, the horizontal ones, for example, this node and this one, node, these are not shorted. So let me explain what I meant by this. Let me take a resistor here. So, if I stick it in here, and the another one here, so this is how you, it works. So basically, this one and this one is a different node because it's on the vertical line. But if I stick it something like this, this one, I'm, I'm extremely sorry, this one on the horizontal line, so it's a different node. But in the vertical line, if I stick it like this, it's basically a short circuit. See? It's basically, it's in the same line here, so it's basically short circuit. You cannot do that, okay? So, mm -hmm. how, so, yeah. what? So, how about something like this? For example, it's not a horizontal line, but, like, I, like, angled it something like this. It still counts as two different nodes, though. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm not sticking the other port in the same vertical line, then we're just fine, okay? So... For example, like if I were to do something in series connection, what are you going to do? So just put two in two nodes here and take the other resistor. So in series connection, the other one point has to be connected to the other. So I have to connect this port with this one, right? So I just put one of this vertical line here, stick it in. So it goes series connection, the other port, something like this here. So it's a series connection, easy. So if I'm going to use a parallel connection, how am I going to use it? simple just the same vertical line any any point it doesn't matter the next one or the one after that it doesn't matter so you just put in here there you go so this is a parallel connection okay so now that you have understood what this line spins take note though like this vertical line there is a gap right here right so there's another so these are not shorted again so this node and this entire thing is two different things these are not so this is another segment it doesn't matter so if you stick one here and one here don't worry it's not going to be shorted okay so the other things are here are these see there's negative there's positive also there's negative there's positive so this uh, horizontal lines here so for this case these lines are shorted See, the horizontal wise, not the vertical wise, the horizontal wise it is shorted. Why so different from the main breadboard here, for here? So basically the thing we, you use for here is basically you use power supply from here. For example, like if you put positive node over here and the negative node over the voltage generator over here, it, this entire thing will work as positive, this entire like area will work as negative. So. There comes a question though, like, why do you need it? I mean, like, you can use power and stick it 
in, in this port and it could still work. Obviously, it could still work, but like it is convenient to use this as powers. For example, like if you have a like big circuit over here and like you have many like subdivision of the circuits, like sub circuits over here and your each blocks require power. So what you're going to do is that if you just connect each wire to the next block and the next block, next block, it's not convenient to be honest. So what you're going to do is that suppose your each blocks require power, you just want to take a wire here and just stick it here. Take a wire, stick it here, take a wire, stick it here. It's very easy, convenient and also easy to track. When it's a complex circuit, it's 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 like imperative that you make your design simple because because like all of your like wires will be all jumbled up and you'd not be able to like t actually tell that like which wire is like connected to which because to be honest it's really small and so this is it like so for power it's convenient to use this port but like if you use like here it would still work and for I already like told you about this area. Okay. Postman. If you check your lab manual, uh, there are two uh, some circuits there, and what we're going to in this experiment one that we're going to uh, calculate the circuit theoretically, then measure it with uh, voltage generator and uh, multimeters, and check if the uh, if our experimental measurements and theoretical value coincides with each other, and if not, what's the percentage of your and other things? So this is the first circuit, and we are going to test the Kirchhoff's law here. So let's just first solve the circuit. Circuit. So you're going to see that there is a voltage generator of 5 volt. So we're going to put 5 volt as a source. And there are two resistors, 680 ohm and 560 ohm. And they are in series connected. So let us suppose that the current flowing through the circuit is I1. And by the Kirchhoff's law, the net voltage should be zero in a closed loop. So from this, we can write this, that is the voltage that is generated by the source should be dropped in those resistors, V1 and V2. V1 is the voltage dropped in the resistor 1 and V2 is the voltage dropped in the resistor 2. So the current, then V1 is equal to, is equal to I1 plus R1 and V2 is equal to I1 plus R2. And if we put the value here of R1 and R2, we get that the current is total 4.03 milliampere. So the total current flowing through this circuit is 4.03 milliampere. And from this, we get V1 is equal to I1 R1, that is 4.03 milliampere to 680 ohm, that is 2.74 volt, volt, and V2 is equal to I2, I1, R2, that is 4.03 milliampere into 560 ohm, that is 2.26 volt. Okay, now let's see if the experimental value uh, coincides with these values, and if not, we will check the percentage of U1. And uh, that's, uh, that is the first step of our experiment. Alright, so for this portion of the experiment, what you're going to do is that you're going to use 5 volt as it is supply, and we're going to use two resistor 560 and 680 ohms in series and we're going to measure the voltage dro drop across this resistor and we'll add it up and we'll check if it is like 5 volt or not if it is then it it's obviously like justifies Kirchhoff's voltage law so we need two resistors right so so here the resistors have already measured all of them and already separated all of them so the thing is that how would you know like which resistor is it? For example, this one is what is it? It is 4.6, a 4.7 mega ohm resistor, right? So one thing, like you can measure it using the color code over here. So, but the thing is that just don't do it. You have multimeter, and you can always check. So before measuring it, make sure that this red wire is stick inside this port. It says ohm, right? and put this so it's, all, it's already in there so always press this one because it measures your resistance or impedance and I'm going to measure it so I put my resistor here and then this one and this one what does the meter say though? sorry the meter says 4.6 mega ohm C so it's a 4.7 mega ohm resistor or 4.6 if you want to be very accurate 
So here's the basic mistakes as an undergrad I also used to make because nev never ever do it like this. So for example you do this and you do this. See the garbage value is not generating is 258 kilo ohm. So never ever use your thumbs or your hands to just hold it like this. So what happens is that when you do it like this your body has a resistance, right? It goes in parallel with this one. So this is the re resistance, the equivalent resistance that it's measuring. So never ever use hands. Just put it over here and use the two probes like this. There you go. 4.6 mega ohm over there. Get it? Okay. So we need two resistors, which is uh, 560 ohms and 680 ohms. I've already separated two. So first you'll always have to measure and then use it. So this is my 680 ohm resistor. We need in series. So I'm going to put in series something like this. So stick it in here. And then another somewhere over here. Doesn't matter where. And the other one we need is 560 ohm resistor. These are my 560 ohm resistors. So since it's series, so what you're going to do is that see this vertical line. Just put one of them over here. Let's go for the third one. And then the other one over here. So there you go. There is my series connection. Now what I have to do is that I have to put my power source right. So the power source over here. Over here. So this is my positive. I'm using channel 1. And this is my negative. I'm putting channel 1. This is it's, right now it's on. Right? So it's 5 volt. Let's just check if, if it's 5 volt or not. So DC, V, right? So we're going to measure voltage. And this one. And the ground. If you just use the ground. See, it says 5 volts over there. So it's 5 volts. It's working. So what you're going to do, we're just going to stick this to cable. See, so it goes on the first resistor, right? So this is my line. Just put anywhere somewhere like this. So this and this is my ground so this is the another point so put in yours and like this okay the circuit is complete now what you're gonna do is that we have already measured our voltage right so if you want to measure the voltage again what you're gonna do is that just go use the probe so this is my positive this is my negative See, over there it says 5.0023. So, just to make sure that our circuit is working, let's go on the resistor nodes. It's the same thing though. Resistor, this resistor, it should say the same. See, it's 4.99. It's just some cable loss or something lost within the cable. That's what's making it up. Well, there's 5, alright? So, let's just write our experimental V source equals. 5.0 volts. It's justified, right? Now, the uh, let's just go for the voltage drop across the resistor. So, my first resistor, let's just see the voltage drop. Oh, another thing though. What if you switch the probes though? Like, I, I use my like red one to the positive one and the black one to the ground. What if you switch it? The thing is that if you switch it, technically it should switch show the same value but negative right let's just check so this one and this one see it's it also says like 5 volts versus negative so that makes sense right okay so for this resistor which one was it this was this one right so it's 680 ohms so on the 680 ohm so it says like for example like let's just 680 let's just measure the voltage drop across this resistor so this and this, the voltage drop is 2.74 volt, right? So let's just write it down. 2.74 volt. <laughs> and the other one uh, is 560, right? So on the 560, it's, what is it? It's 2.25 volts. 60, 2.25 volts. 
So you see that uh, if we add this two, it's 4.99 volts, which is almost equal to our V source. That makes sense, right? So you can easily write it's verified. V source equal, we just say our V680 ohm plus V560, which is our cursor's voltage draw, right? So the voltage divided across the resistor equals the source voltage. All right, let's see another circuit, and we're gonna measure the current here by Kirchhoff's current law. And <clears throat> you can check the manual, the circuit that's given is like something like this uh, 5 volt voltage generator and two way stands that have been currently in parallel, uh, 560 and 680 ohm, uh, they're currently in parallel. So uh, we're gonna check the current through these two way stands. Uh, 560 ohm and 680 ohm and then we're going to get the total current flowing through the circuit so let us suppose in this node if we write the Kirchhoff's current law we get this kind of equation the current that is coming in this node is I and the current that is going down from this node is I1 and I2 so I1 is the current passing through resistance 1 and I2 is the current passing through resistance 2. So if we measure I1, that is uh, the current passing through resistance 1 is uh, V source, that's the voltage within these two nodes, divided by R1 and we get 8.92 milliampere. And for I2, we get 7.35 milliampere. Now, if we add those two, we get 16.27 milliampere, and that is the current flowing through the whole circuit. So we're gonna check if our measure value coincides with this value. Hi everyone, uh, Khan here again. Uh, this time, what you're gonna do is that we're going to verify Kirchhoff's current law. So I got which is it, 680 ohm in my hand. So let's just dig it in here. And this is my other one, which is 560. So it should be in parallel, right? So look at this. So over here. And to the same node, I have to just dig it in. There you go. Okay. So now the entire circuit is in parallel. So if you were to connect the circuit, so we need power source, right? So one node over here and the okay this one is turned off. The other node is here. So since this is a parallel connection, the voltage across every resistor should be voltage drop across every resistor should be five volt because we're using five volt source. Uh, it just turned off. Let me just turn it back on again. Just on. It says five. Enter. There you go. It should be five right now. Let's just check. DC five volt. And let's just this. This. And this. It says five. Let's just check across the resistors. It says five. Across this one. It says 5. So it's okay. We're cool. Okay. So for this experimentation, we're going to measure current, right? So one thing you have to understand though, like in well, while we're measuring voltage, we're using these two probes as like, like we use it parallel to the nodes, right? For example, like we're trying to measure the voltage across this one. So the way you're using, we're using in parallel, like this. That's what is giving us the voltage, right? But to use the ammeter or to measure current, we have to use it in series. Let me just say what I meant. At first, like to measure the current, we're going to use, take this one out, remember? And stick either in this one and this one, we have a rough estimation that the current should be in milliampere from our calculation over there. So we're going to just put this one. This one is like 500 milliampere max. That's why we're sticking it in here. Let's just go to the basics, some basics of it. For example, like this is 
my circuit right now, right? So these are my, this is my whatever, like, whatever, it's just R1, this is my R2, whatever. And this is my V source. So this is the circuit I have right now. Okay, this is my V. So to measure the voltage, we always use voltmeter in parallel, something like this. The reason we do that is that in voltmeter, the internal resistance of voltmeter is like very high. So since the entire resistance of voltmeter is very high, when the current is going something like this, it doesn't go past this one because the current always uses the shortest path and the, the path where it's easy to go. The resistance are smaller compared to voltmeter because it's very high. So that's why very, very like minimum amount of current, virtually nothing will go through this and the entire current will go through this and this. So it doesn't make any change to the circuit. However, for the ammeter case, it's a different. In ammeter, the internal resistance is very, very low. That's why we put it in series, not in parallel. So if you put like ammeter over here, if you put ammeter, so since the, inter uh, the internal resistance of the ammeter is very low, what happens is that the current sees that from this branch, the resistance is very low, so it flows through this branch entirely, not from this and this. So it doesn't make any sense, right? So our aim is to pass current through this, this resistor and this room, not this ammeter. It will totally alter the properties of the circuits. So that's why we, since the internal resistance is low, we use ammeter in series, something like this. Suppose we are to measure the, this branch current, we use ammeter in series like this branch. So since the entire resistance is low, the entire branch has like a very significant change in resistance. The main dominant one is R1, still R1, so it, the current inside R1, it, it doesn't change actually, it basically stays the same. So keep that in mind, do not do not make this mistake because people usually make, so yeah, we were to make current, we were to measure current, we just put it in like this, and and just, let's just see, let's shift, so it says DCI, this goes current, get it? So shift, DCI, so this is DCV, over there is a the blue thing, it's written DCI, so you put shift and then now it's current, you can see, it's milliampere DC. So, you have to put ammeter in series to R1, not in parallel to R1. If you do in parallel something like this, if you just put it like this, what will happen is that since the, this ammeter doesn't have like very negligible resistance, the entire current will pass through it, right? So it will be a short circuit over here, almost. So if the entire current will pass through it, look what happens here. Come here. So we have put the range is 500 milliampere, but the current will be so much that there's a highly likely, there's a very high possibility that you will, like the fuse, uh, this fuse will burn, all right? You'll cut the fuse. So you'll have to change it, but then it wouldn't work. So never ever, I repeat, never use ammeter in parallel, never. So what you're gonna do, you have to use this ammeter in series to R1. So there's my R1 over here, sorry. There's this port. Just put the one port somewhere to the left to a different node. Okay, just take it in. There you go. So we're going to put this in series, right? So what you're gonna do? There's my one port, and there's the other. There should be current over there. Sorry, just give me a second. Oh, okay, see what the mistakes I'm making here? I didn't put it into the current mode. So shift, DCI, now it should work. So this and this. The meter is 7.41 milliampere. So my I1 is 7.41 milliamp. Now for my I2, which is this one to this one, again I have to put ammeter in series to this one. So again, let's put this node back to the ground. This is my ground, right? Yes, this is my ground. Let's put this node back to me. So what I did is that I put this connection over there. There's no ammeter over here. I shortened it. Okay, so for this one, I need to just take it to a different node, for example, like over here. 
and then I'm going to measure it. So I'll put it in series with the ammeter. So this note and this note, the current measures is 9.07, 9.03 milliampere. So my I2 equals 9.03 milliamp. Could you take out the calculator? Sum this two, it should be uh, 1644 milliamps. So now what you're going to do is that we're going to measure current to the entire branch. So for example, this if this is my I and this one is my I1, this one is my I2. So we're going to check if like the sum of I1 plus I2, which is 16.44, actually equals to I. So what you're going to do is that we're going to measure I. So what you're going to do is that we're going to put an ammeter over here or over here, it doesn't matter. Here, so in this entire branch. So what happens is that the current goes over here. It splits in two between these two nodes, uh, these two branches, and then it gets back in, and then it should be I over here too. So we're going to measure I over here. So for I, so th let's just put this R2 back to the ground. Sorry. This is... Okay, so th look at this. The ammeter should be from this point to this. So let's just put the ground to a different node here. And let's just put ammeter in series between these two nodes. So any, any, any node, like this one, this one is both the same. This and this. The meter reads 16.41 milliamps. 16.41. Four one. Right. So it's almost the same though, like 16.41, 16.44 is almost the same. It's just some like some error leading to, you know, shaking I guess or something. So see, so which basically means I equals I1 plus I2, which actually verifies the Kirchhoff's current law.